so the, the two theories are the same. Uh, well, no, I shouldn't say that. If, if you have something really integrable on a closed bounded interval AB, then your function is also the bag integrable. And the two integrals are the same on that uh, finite closed and bounded interval AB. Okay, so. The proof of that. Uh, right. What? So, uh, first thing, uh, a partition of uh, AB is a finite collection of points where your first point is A. And your last point is B. Okay, so you you just slice your interval into uh, different uh, points, and then we are going to take uh, P a sequence of partitions. And uh, and the norm of a partition is going to go to zero. Okay, so you you keep slicing your a b in smaller and smaller intervals. Okay, the, the, the norm of the partition is the largest one of these intervals. Well, you want the largest one to be going to zero. Okay, so you keep adding adding points there. And uh, okay, so what else? We so what? Well, maybe what you do, in fact, when you have your function, is Okay, so let's, let this be A, this is B, and right, what uh, your you take the lowest point uh, for each one of these intervals, let's say. And you, and you construct like this, a kind of a, a simple function, but it's not really a simple function because it could be negative. But it's a step function. And that's what, so for partition uh, Pn, you are going to have a function Ln, which is going to be the sum of uh, uh, lower bound. And you are going to construct the corresponding the corresponding upper uh, function. So instead of taking the minimum here, you'll take the maximum on this interval. And you construct that. So in order to have two-step functions, and in order to have your function g squeezed between the lower and the upper one for every n. OK. 
Okay, I'm, I'm not getting into, I'm not defining the notation too closely because it's just cumbersome, but RV idea is clear enough that you are just bounding your function by two step functions. That's what you call ln, the lower one, and un, the upper one. It depends on n because you are slicing your interval in smaller and smaller pieces. Now, uh, one so uh, yeah, one one important thing is that because g is Riemann integrable. Uh, G must be bounded. Okay, that's that's one of the properties of Riemann. I mean, that's the hypothesis to build the whole thing, the whole theory. You need a bounded function. So, uh, and and the way you construct your ln and un, uh, the bound is the same. So, if uh, G is less than K, uh, so are ln and un. Okay, because you, you just keep taking uh, the infimum of the supremum, so you, you won't go over your upper bound here, k. And that then what this tells you is that. Uh, uh, Okay. Yeah, this tells you that the ln and un are Lebesgue measurable and uh, integrable too. Uh, they are Lebesgue measurable because your different, I mean, it's just this, uh, this type of function we have been talking about. They are, they are measurable for the same reason that uh, uh, simple functions are measurable, because you are taking measurable sets here. These are intervals. So, of course, you know, these are Borel sets. And therefore, you are going to get a, a measurable function by doing this. Which is not, at this point, you don't know that G is measurable, for instance. Okay, we, with our hypothesis, we know it's we we only know that uh, you know you can squeeze it between two functions like that. Okay. Now, what? Uh, why do you do you need this stuff? Well, When you do the integral of ln, let's say, with respect to the Lebesgue measure m, you get uh, with a notation there, and this is a finite sum uh, over k. And I you get this, of course, by by, defini by linearity of a Lebesgue integral. Okay, one m is the lower bound for your function. The other m is the Lebesgue, me uh, the, the Lebesgue uh, measure. Sorry to use the same letter. Now, this is called the lower Darboux sum. Right, these are the lower rectangles. And then you do the same thing with the upper DM, and you get the upper Darboux sum. And to say that G is 
Riemann integral means that these two sums converge to the same limit. And that limit is precisely what we call the Riemann integral. of G. Okay? You, 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 you know that your function G is integrable if by doing this lower and upper sum and letting your partition be finer and finer gives you a convergence to the same limit. That's how you know that it's a Riemann integrable function. Okay? That's how you construct your Riemann integral. Okay? So, <clears throat> that's one thing. And, and so at this point we know that these two guys converge to the same limit. And what else? Uh, okay. So I need this. Now, the other, th the other ingredient that I need is that ln is an increasing sequence of uh, functions. Do you see why? Okay, you are taking finer and finer partitions, so your infimum on every interval is going to be higher uh, and higher. Okay? And for a symmetric reason, your UN is decreasing, is a decreasing sequence. So you have a limit L, which is finite, because uh, all these things are bounded, and the limit U. So which one of our terms should I use to say that this happens? Why can I pass uh, to the limit under the interval? Dominated convergence theorem is the right answer. They are monotone. So you may think I'm going to use the monotone convergence theorem. Not a good choice in this case because you don't know that these are positive functions. Okay? But the dominated convergence theorem works. And always, when you use that, you need to be very precise. What is your dominating function? Well, in this case, your dominating function is a constant k. And k is integrable because, OK, I should be writing everywhere that we are looking at things on AB. Because the integral of k on AB with respect to the Lebesgue measure is k times b minus a. So this is integrable. This argument would not work if we were integrating on an unbounded interval. interval. OK? Same thing for the upper one. You also know that your uh, un by the dominated convergence theorem again converges to the upper one. But these two limits must be the same.
Why? Because G is Riemann integrable. Therefore, uh, the Darboux sums converge to the Riemann integral. So the two limits are the same, and they, they are equal to the Riemann integral. Which tells me, so now at this point you have what? You have that uh, u is certainly bigger than l. Because un is always bigger than nl. And when you go to the limit, you are going to still get this to be true. And then your integral, u minus ldm, is 0. So the, if the integral of a positive function is 0, we know that uh, the function must be 0 almost everywhere. with respect to the Lebesgue measure. OK? But G G is squeezed between U and L. And therefore, uh, you have that uh, u minus g is also 0 almost everywhere. Because if this is 0, then g minus u must be 0 too, almost everywhere. So g is equal to u, which is a measurable function. And m is a, uh, the Lebesgue space, is a complete Lebesgue, is a complete measure, measure space, which means that all the null sets are measurable. So this implies that G is Lebesgue measurable. OK, so this is a, a, a delicate point where you use the fact that your G is almost everywhere equal to U to conclude that your g must be Lebesgue measurable. And therefore, it makes sense to talk about the integral of g. I mean, it makes sense if your g is integrable. But that, now, that's easy, because for this, uh, by the same argument as before, Uh, what um, you do is you simply say that your g is less than this k, and k is measure is uh, integral. Therefore, g is Lebesgue integral. And then you are done because uh, because you know that your g is between l and u. The integral of L, uh, respect to M, is less than the integral of G respect to M, which is less than the integral of U respect to M. But we have already shown that these two are the same thing. They're equal. And they are equal to the Lebesgue, to the Riemann integral. So this guy must be equal to that too. OK? So that's So really, what requires the most work is to show that uh, G is Lebesgue integral, is Lebesgue measurable. Sorry.
that's that's really the main point. And I, I'm a I, have, I was a little quick about that, so let me let me come back to that for just for a minute. What what we can do here. is rewrite this thing so we can write g as being g minus u plus u. This is a function which is 0 almost everywhere. And so that's, that's one claim that we haven't really proved uh, is that, but it's easy. To, to prove is that every function which is zero almost everywhere is Lebesgue inter Lebesgue measurable because it's a complete space and therefore so this is Lebesgue measurable and this is Lebesgue measurable because of the way it's built so the, when you sum the two of them you get a Lebesgue measurable Okay, and uh, what else can we say? Well, the, the thing, the, the crucial thing is that u minus g equal to yeah. If u minus g is different from zero, then uh, u minus l must be different from zero. And this is an all set. And therefore, you are a subset of an null set, and this must be Lebesgue measurable. Since uh, M is, well, RM is complete. So that's, that's an important uh, theorem because it tells us, well, if you have a Lebesgue uh, integral, just use what you know about Riemann integrals. And you can do, you can use a fundamental theorem of calculus and get your Lebesgue integral, for instance. Okay, so that's, that's where uh, it's crucial to know that because at this point we haven't learned how to compute Lebesgue integrals. Okay, for us, it's an abstract thing. We, we know how to compute Lebesgue integrals of simple functions, yes. But then we know that we can pass to the limit, but that doesn't tell us how to do it in practice. Okay? We know it exists. We know that uh, it's the limit of something, but we don't know how to compute the limit. So this is quite important for computational purposes. So for instance, if I want to compute uh, the Lebesgue integral of exponential minus x on uh, 0, 10, then I say, well, this is just the integral from 0 to 10 of exponential minus x dx. And I know how to compute that. Now, more interesting is, what do you do if you need to compute this same integral over 0 infinity?
Well, you need to go back to a bounded interval. So in order to do that, you say that this is the limit Why can I say that? Why can I say that the left hand side is the limit of the right hand side? Which theorem can I use? See, if I look at this guy here, then maybe I should call it n so that it's. If I look at fn equal to the indicator of 0n times exponential minus x, then this thing is an increasing sequence. Because as you, as you, you extend your n, you get a domain which is larger and larger. Therefore, and it's positive too, so I can use the monotone convergence theorem to say that. And here inside, I can use the Riemann interval, exactly as I did here, and it's going to be 1 minus exponential minus n. And then take the limit of that, and I'm going to get that uh, my limit is 1. Okay. So when your domain is unbounded, you need to be a little careful. You, you'll need to use one of the theorems to explain how you can extend your domain like this. Next result, assume that G is defined on AB. G is Riemann entangled if and only if G is continuous. almost everywhere on AB. So that's pretty restrictive. Okay? To be Riemann integral means that you are continuous almost everywhere. And uh, also need to uh, define unbounded here. I will, not, I will not prove that. It's not that difficult, but it's a little technical. You have many details. It takes a long time to, to, to get to it. But the result is very beautiful, because it really gives you a, a very nice relation between Lebeg and Riemann integration, because this almost everywhere means that the, the, the Lebesgue measure of the point x where g is not continuous is zero. That's, that's
that's how uh, how the Lebesgue measure comes into place. That you you measure the discontinuities and you get that it's an L set with respect to the Lebesgue measure. Questions? So let me assign homework for next week. So uh, number one, take a function from 0, 1 to r, which is integrable, the bag integrable, and compute the limit as n goes to infinity of xn f of x with respect to the Lebesgue measure. Number two, take a positive function which is measurable assume that mu of x is finite show that the limit of fn d mu in n exists and is finite if and only if mu of the set f bigger than 1 is 0. Number three, assume that Fn converges to F on zero one. What's the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral on 0, 1 of fn exponential minus fn? B, show that the integral the series fn square is equal to the series of the intervals. Four, compute the limit as n goes to infinity of Zero n one minus x over n exponential x over two dm. So next week, I'll uh, 
bring a review and we'll go over the review the following week and we'll have test 2 on November 14th. So the material for the test stops here.